Hey YouTubers, my name is Dan and by the end of this video you'll know how to export your Photoshop images ready for your website. This particular video is a free extract from my course called How to Make Money Building Professional Website Mockups Using Photoshop. And if you really want to start making money as a web designer, there is a discount code for my full course in the description. So I'll switch over. Now let's say no to the slice tool and yes to export as. Now they really should have given that a cooler name. Export as isn't very sexy, is it? Now in this video, we're going to look at how to get your images out of Photoshop so that you can hand them over to your developer to start building the website. Now what they're going to want is some web ready images, okay, not just the big Photoshop file. If your developer does use Photoshop, then potentially you could just hand over this PSD and leave them to it. But often it's the designer's role to get the images out ready for web. There are pretty much two formats we're going to work with. There's going to be a JPEG and a PNG. Now, Essentially, JPEGs are great for photographs and PNGs are really great for any kind of linear icons, logos, text, those types of things. It's reasonably easy to know which one to use because it comes down to file size versus quality. If it looks great and it's small, then you should be using that format. Okay, so you check both of them, JPEG versus PNG, see which is the smallest, see what looks the best, and then use that. We're using a new feature in Photoshop CC 2015. If you're using an early version, you're gonna to have to use something called the slice tool. Okay, but because we're using the newer version, we're gonna use this fancy awesome way called the export as. So to do it, let's look at doing this image first. Okay, so I've uh, selected in my layers, there's this image sitting on top of the box. It doesn't really matter which one you export, okay, whether it's the box or the image, it'll work for both of them. So what we're gonna do is right click it, and we're gonna go down to this one that says export as. When we get onto when we know it's a PNG, we can use a quick export, but at the moment, I know because it's an image it's going to be a JPEG so I'm going to go export as okay so it tells me the size and it tells me that as a PNG this one's going to be set at 76 kilobytes and that's pretty big so you've got a relative scale once you start getting close to 100 that's far too big for an image this size okay so when you're at 100 kilobytes you're way kind of above what it should be so what we can do is switch it to JPEG and then you've got this quality slider. Very rarely does it go out at 100%. You wanna drag it down until you've got this kind of balance of, it's very small in terms of file sizes, but there's almost no noticeable degrading of the image. So what you do is you drag it right down to something silly. Okay, so we're down at 15%, and it's hard to know, is it good, is it bad? Okay, what I like to do, just click up here, and click back down, and decide, how low can you go? Now in this case, it can get quite low because the image itself is quite noisy and it's black and white, we can get away with quite a lot of low quality, but you can see the size becoming quite low. So when it's up at 100, it's at a reasonably good 38 kilobytes, but I can get it a lot lower. Now my rules, I kind of hang around in there between 30 and 60, depending on the image. This one can go quite low because it is quite noisy. So at 30% of its original quality, we're at 12 kilobytes and that's a nice fine size for me. I'm gonna hit export. The last thing you need to do is when you are exporting this, I'm gonna hit this little option here so I can see. I'm gonna put it on my desktop. I'm gonna put it in a special folder called Web Ready Images that I've made. And um, the only thing you need to know that when you are naming your images, okay, is you need to make sure there's no spaces and you need to make sure you don't use any of the crazy characters that are along the top of your keyboard. So just keep it to numbers and letters and make sure there are no spaces. Okay, I'm gonna hit export and that's my JPEG out. Now we can move around. Let's say it's my portfolio here. I'm going to, doesn't really matter which of these two boxes I select, but I can right click it and say export as, and hopefully it'll remember what I last did. Okay, so 30%. Now you can see in this case, 30% is not great for me. Okay, if I drag it up to 100, it might be hard to see on the video that you're watching unless you're in HD. Okay, but it is at 30%, it's not great. So different images will allow you go higher and lower depending on the quality of them and what stuff's in them. Okay, so I told you I kind of go up to about a high of 60. Okay, in this case, I might go just a little bit higher because the trade-off is, can you see down here, we're at five kilobytes, so something that's quite small. So I'm gonna hit export. Great, and that's gonna be portfolio one. It's taken the name off the layer. Okay, so when you are naming your layers and you wanna save some time later on is to use hyphens instead of spaces. I like to use lowercase. Doesn't really matter when it comes to web design, but I like to keep consistent. Hit export, great, so that's that one. And you can move through, export this one. Now what you can do is you can export lots at the same time. So I'm gonna click portfolio two, three, and four. Right click, go to export as. And what will happen is it'll tile it on this left hand side here. So you have this one selected. Okay, 70% is fine, small. This one here, 
This one ends up at seven kilobytes. Can you see the difference? They're the same size, but there's a lot of different content going along in this image. Okay, a lot more different colors and color variations. So this one's a lot higher and you might be able to go a little bit lower in terms of the quality. Okay, it'll depend on your image. So work your way through them. Okay, this one looks great. This one looks fine. That one looks fine at 40. Maybe not, 60. We're gonna click export. And the only problem with this though is that naming them, it's gonna dump them all in this folder without putting our little hyphens in. So we can do that later. So it's exported them. I'm gonna go and find it on my desktop and uh, web ready images. There is portfolio one, two, and three. And I'm just gonna go do my, you save yourself a load of time later on by using lowercase if you want to and make sure there's hyphens instead of spaces. Or you can use underscores, it doesn't really matter. Now the next format we're gonna look at is PNG. So PNG format gets used when there's one of two things happen. That there is really flat graphics like these icons. Okay, nice things like icons and fonts and logos. Anything that has a really static flat design to it comes out really good as a PNG. PNGs have a really good way of keeping nice crisp edges at really small file sizes. The other benefit of a PNG is that it uses transparency, whereas a JPEG doesn't. So I want these icons here to be see-through so that I can change the background color like this and it's still see-through. Okay, so I can go through, change the background color and there's holes in the middle of here to show it through. Okay, if I use a JPEG, it doesn't allow me to do it. It has to have a solid background, can't be changed. It's the same here for these graphics here. Even though they're an image and I said, JPEGs are great for images, in this case, I'm gonna have to take the hit on file size to be a little bit larger because I want transparent background. And I'll show you why. This is a really good example to show you. So I'm gonna find team one, I'm gonna right click it and there is quick export as PNG. Now when you're new, okay, you're not too sure if it should be a PNG or not, you can use the export as, which is the slightly longer way. So I've got the JPEG format and you can see in JPEG that the quality, if I change that up to something like 70, the quality is what, 10 kilobytes, nice and small, but it's got this white background. The JPEG will not allow transparency, okay? It's not in its makeup. So we're gonna to have to deal with PNG and we've got two kinds. There is PNG 8, which is Fine, okay, and this file size is quite small, but the actual color palette it can use is actually quite small. It's only 256 colors. So if you wanna use a full color PNG, you have to use this one up here, which is called a PNG 24, okay, even though they don't write it there. So PNG 8 versus PNG 4, you'll see the file size is substantially different, okay? This one here up to PNG 24, okay? This is really big. Okay, but this is the trade-off of having transparency. JPEGs are really small, but graphics that have to have transparent backgrounds and have to use full color, have to use this PNG here. Okay, so I'm gonna use full color PNG, hit export. Great, and team one, click okay. Great, so I should now work through and do the same for the other two heads and the rest of the images here. Let's look at doing it for this icon along the top and it will be the exact same process of exporting this image along the bottom here. I've got my icon, okay, and I know this needs to be a PNG. Why? Because it needs transparent background, which default makes it a PNG, and it is a nice flat graphic, which means it's gonna be nice and small. Right click and I could use my quick export as PNG now because I know it's gonna be a PNG because it's flat graphics, it needs transparency, it's definitely a PNG. Okay, so I'm gonna hit export as PNG and I'm gonna go straight to here and I'm gonna put it on my desktop under my WebReady graphics and I'm gonna put it in there. Now I just work through the different icons and just say export as PNG. Let's have a quick look at the PNG size. So you can see this one here, 90 kilobytes, really big because it's a PNG trying to do what JPEGs do but you can see PNGs with transparency doing what it does well. See, it's down to two kilobytes, nice and small. Okay, and these are the kinds of graphics that you're gonna need to hand over to your web developer for your website build. Now, I love to share, so I made a few of these videos free. Of course, though, I'd love for you to go on and do my full course of over 50 videos. There's a discount code in the description. Please like and subscribe, and hi to our good YouTube people. Now, I'm saluting and waving, but you can't see that, can you?